Hi everyone, welcome to Bayside Church for this weekend. Uh, it's a great weekend for you to be with us. Uh, it's Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, which is a pretty profound moment in the history of the church. And Kay, we've got a special guest today, don't we? We do. I am so excited, Jimmy. Pastor Lynette Tobin is joining us this weekend. And we haven't seen Pastor Lynette since, what, 2019? Yeah, I think so, just before and, COVID. Yeah, and I just love her. She uh, brings the word, but she also prophesies as well. And, oh, just amazing lady. Yeah, and she, she has an incredible anointing on her life, so... Uh, I'm excited for today yeah. and I'm believing that uh, as you watch wherever you're watching from and whatever platform you're watching on, uh, that you are encouraged through what Pastor Lynette is sharing today. And speaking of the different platforms, uh, you'll see a link in the chat for a connection card. Uh, we'd love for you to click on that. Um, and that's just an opportunity for us to get to know you a little bit and connect you in with different programs that we have as a church. So, Kay, we're going to go into worship. Yeah, Do sure. You want to pray? Absolutely. Lord, we just really thank you. We thank you for Pentecost weekend, Lord. Mm. And uh, as we go into worship, may you just settle our hearts and maybe just sing, knowing that we are singing to a living King and that you are here with us right now. And we praise you and we just thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Steve, and the worship team. Welcome Bayside Church, it's great to have you along today, we're going to worship God together. Forever, 
church. He is good, 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 good. search the world It couldn't fill me A man's empty praise and treasures of faith I never know You came along Put me back
Thank you so much, Steve, and the worship team. I love it when Steve yeah, is absolutely. on. You know, so reflective in his worship and so appropriate, especially for this weekend, yes, being Pentecost I think so. weekend. I yeah. think so. Well, we're going to come into a time of offering uh, now and worship the Lord in a different way, but in a way that is so honouring to not just us, but also us in the community yeah. as well, right? And there is different ways that you are able to sow into your tithes and offerings. Uh, they're up on the screen right now. And um, yeah, over to you, Jimmy. Oh, thanks, Kay. I think, um, you know, reflecting on it, we were talking before the camera went live about, you know, it's it's cold here in Melbourne. You're in a scarf yeah. and long sleeves. I'm in a T-shirt. You're um, just odd, Jimmy. You know that, right? Well, look, it's Pentecost weekend. <laughs> so at the fire of the Holy Spirit. Oh, good on keep, you. Keeping me warm. What are you saying about me? No, I... Uh, I know people that will sit in front of an open fire wearing multiple Absolutely. layers. And that so, would be me. <laughs> so it's uh, people do what they need to do to, to, to stay warm and to keep that fire yeah. stoked. You dug yourself out of that one yeah, really did. well, yeah, Jimmy. That was well, that, done. That was well done. Uh, but I wanted to, to share a couple of verses from Romans chapter 8. Um, you know, I, I love a lot of the teaching that, that Paul does. And um, towards the end of chapter 8, he's got a some really cool things that he says. And it says, For I'm persuaded that not even death or life, angels or rulers, things present or things to come, hostile powers, height or depth, or any other created thing will have the power to separate us from the love of God yes. that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I, I, I just love that. And I love the emphasis on no created thing yep. can separate us from the love of God. So it means no uh, no person, no uh, animal, no anything, um, not even the enemy who is created by God 
um, can separate us from his love for us. And so as we give, I, you know, I want to encourage you to actually sit in that space of knowing that you are loved by our Heavenly Father, you are loved by King Jesus, and there is nothing in the world when we give our hearts and give our lives to Him, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Even if we don't, we are still loved mm. by God. And so as you give today, give from that place of recognising that we are loved by our Heavenly Father and nothing gets in the way of that. Stunning. So why don't you lay your hands on the smart device and let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your goodness and we thank you that there is nothing that can separate us from your love. And I pray that you would use these tithes and offerings and use them for your name to be glorified and for us to have a tangible impact in our community that brings people into an experience of your love and, and of your presence. So in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And thank you, church, for your continued generosity. And, you know, we're coming to the end of, of May, which means the end of First Fruits Month. Yeah. Um, and there's still some ways that you can participate with that. If you want a tax-deductible receipt, um, you can give your First Fruits to the Bayside Foundation before the end of June. Um, otherwise, um, you can just go to the Tithely app uh, or the regular way that you would give and so into First Fruits, which allows us to, to go a little bit deeper in mm. what we do in the community, but also uh, what we do with our online services and, and faith de development, the way that we can invest into, into you. So I, I, I love First Fruits. I do too, Jimmy. And I think it's really good that, you know, even though we, May is our First Fruits month, yep. it doesn't mean that throughout the year you can't sow into First yep. Fruits as well. I mean, you may have excess money or a bonus yep. or something like that where the Lord has really placed on your heart to, you know, bless the community, bless mm. something else that we are doing here online and in house as well. Yeah. And so you feel free at any time yeah. um, that the Lord prompts you throughout the year. First Fruits is always there and you can always just sow in outside of yeah, May as well. 100%. Yeah. And it's, it is a sacrifice it and is. it is a step of obedience. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we, we see great fruit oh, when we, we take steps yeah. of sacrifice mm -hmm. and obedience. And while they are hard, mm -hmm. um, there is good that comes from that. Totally. You know, I always get the blessed to be a blessing. Yeah, 100%. And it is, it is hard. It is a sacrifice, yep. right? But... Jesus sacrificed his life for us. Yep. And so what can we go and do over and above yes. sometimes? And it's that stretch. It's a moving those tent pegs on our lives. And, uh, yeah, blessed to be a blessing. And yep. we do, as Jimmy said, we thank you for everyone that has given into yeah. First Fruits this year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And now we're going to uh, hand over with great excitement Absolutely. to Pastor Lynette. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. My name is Lynette Tobin. How wonderful to be with you on Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday. What an amazing day to celebrate. You know, Pentecost is all about receiving God's power to aid in the building of the body of Christ, which is the church, and that's you. Let's look at the promise of Pentecost in receiving God's power. Acts 1, verses 7 and 8. And he, Jesus, said to them, It's not for you to know times and seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. That's God's promise to you and me. And you know what, people? He fulfilled that promise. Acts 2, verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And today, people, we celebrate this event. Today on this Sunday, we not only celebrate this event, but we can be partakers of this historic, life-changing event. This is for you. Jesus told them this would happen after his resurrection, an amazing promise which we too 
can be part of. Luke 24, 49 says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. This event was unprecedented. They would not have known what to expect. Jesus said they would receive power. He told them moments before he ascended that they would receive the Holy Spirit. But you know what? He didn't give them any details. I wonder what these people were thinking. But you know, they must be thinking, will he knock on the door? What will he look like? He gave them no point of reference at all. Or, I mean, people, what were they expecting? What are you expecting? Was it a mighty wind? Would it be tongues of fire? But what would that look like? I tell you what, they definitely got a lot more than they dreamed about. Also imagine the noise, the commotion. People must have thought they were mad. Actually, they thought they were drunk. You know, about 40 years ago, I went to sort of a Pentecost meeting. I'm not sure really what it was, but I'd never been there before. I went, a friend took me. I hadn't come back to the Lord for very long. And, you know, I was sitting there listening and all of a sudden the pastor was preaching and he said, people, the Shekinah glory is here. All get down. <laughs> I thought, get down? What's Shekinah glory? I didn't have a clue what was going on. He said, everybody get down. Everybody drop to the floor. So I dropped to the floor. And I looked around and I couldn't see anything. I didn't even know what they were doing or what they were talking about. And you know what? Everybody just got up again and they went on with the meeting. It was amazing. You know, but the amazing story about Pentecost Sunday is, it, is that it was definitely the Holy Spirit moving. Definitely. That definitely wasn't. But this definitely was. And you know what? The 120 in the upper room passed it on to other people. Passed it on. See, if we read the book of Acts, people, there's great stories of believers being filled with the Holy Spirit. So how does that relate to us? See, when you are saved, you receive the Holy Spirit. John 20, 21 and 22 says, So Jesus said, them to again, said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive Holy Spirit. So as you see in this verse, when you are born again, you receive the Holy Spirit. It's enough to be born again and go to heaven, yes. But is it enough to live the powerful lives on earth that the Lord promises? Is it enough to empower us to make a big difference in other people's lives? Because that's what it's all about. Let's look at Acts 19. Verses 1 to 6. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not as much as heard anything about the Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptised? So they said, Into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptised with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe in him who would come after him, that is, on Jesus Christ. When they heard this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. See, upon arriving in Ephesus, Paul found a group of disciples a clear indication, people, that they were truly baptised Christians. They were saved and baptised, but they had no revelation of the Holy Spirit. Their teachers knew some basics of Christianity from contact with John the Baptist, but they seemed unaware of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. These, therefore, these people had only been baptised into John's baptism. This indicates that their conversion experience was accompanied by the knowledge that a fuller experience with the Holy Spirit would come. Are you ready for that? For a fuller experience of the Holy Spirit. See, Matthew 3.11 says this, I indeed baptised you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I 
whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptise with the Holy Spirit and fire. Are you ready, people? Are you ready? You know, I could talk a lot about tongues, but I tell you what tongues, speaking in tongues, is not. It's not demonic. It's not just for the early church. It's not gibbish made up by people. It is not the gift of languages, and it's not earned, it's not deserved, and none of us are holy enough. But you know what? Tongues, heavenly language, praying in the spirit is all about, it's supernatural. It's empowering. It gives power to witness. It's about other people. The baptism is all about other people. It gives power to witness. It gives us power to pray. It's faith building. When you are feeling weak, speak in the heavenly language and you can feel his presence and his power come upon your life. See, Ephesians 5.18 says to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We are to be filled with this Holy Spirit. Oh, but I'm not sure, I don't believe. No, we are to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And some of you will be for the first time. Some were filled another time. But today you need a fresh touch from the Lord. Some of you have asked before, you know what, I got prayed for and nothing happened. But, you know, some of you have never asked. You've never asked. We all need and want power. And Jesus promises that power in the above verse. The Holy Spirit is the enabling power of God. The power of the Holy Spirit enables us to do and be what God wants us to be. It's interesting that in Acts 1.8, he states that the people receive power to be witnesses, not just power to do witnesses, witnessing. We are to be witnesses, not just, we're not just having power to do witnessing. God wants us to become what he has in mind for us. And then out of who we are, we will begin to do what he wants us to do. I've had a very sick husband in the last months, and so I've had carers come in to help me with my husband. And a little Singaporean carer came in, gorgeous girl, do anything. And she was just helping all the time, and, and weeks and that have gone by. And one day she was just standing in the, cleaning my shower and I was standing on the other side. She was cleaning it. I was just looking at her, okay? And, you know, and suddenly she popped up from the shower and said, I believe in Jesus Christ. I said, oh, that's wonderful. She said, I do. Do you want to know why? I said, yeah, I'd love to know why. Because I hadn't straight out witnessed to her. And she said, because of the way you live in this house, the way you go through trials, the way you go through problems, you know what? It has to be Jesus. Jesus has to be a reality. I said, wow, isn't that wonderful? So you never know. You can bring them to the Lord even while they're cleaning the shower. See, doing witnesses in good is good. Witnessing to people is a great thing. But we also must be witnesses to Christ in our everyday life, the way we act, the way we do things. In Acts 2, 38 and 39, then Peter said to them, Repent. And let every one of you be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ for remissions of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a gift. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to deserve it. It's a gift. For the promise is to you and your children and to all who are, are far off, as many as our God will call. If so many are far off. We can reach them when we're baptised with the Holy Spirit because we're moving his power. His words bring life, they bring hope, they bring future. But you know what? It comes to us by grace, not by our own efforts. We can't make it happen. We, re we receive it by exercising faith and trust and not just by straining and struggling or waiting to be perfect. You know, I'm not 21 anymore and you know what? I'm still not perfect. You know, but we need to come to him believing that he will fill us afresh with his spirit. This is faith. Ask Jesus to baptise you with the Holy Spirit today. Faith takes from God what he has promised. People can struggle. People can struggle when they seemingly do not receive baptism Holy Spirit straight away. I had a friend, I have a friend actually, I won't name her, beautiful woman, a beautiful woman. You know, when she came over with her husband and they were going to pastoral church, she was struggling with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
See, she was born in the days when they had tarry meetings. Every week they had tarry meetings and you go to the meetings and hope you got baptised with the Holy Spirit and every time she went home she never received it. It put such fear in her life. She had such fear. She felt that one day the enemy dared to put a sign on her saying, you are wanting, you are wanting. She, that really, really knocked her right back, this amazing woman. But you know, after quite a few years, she came to a point of complete surrender. And she said, you know what? I will obey you, God. And she presented her life as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptance to God, which was her reasonable service. The outcome, I'm telling you, she was a changed person. Fear was banished. Love and power filled her and myself and many other women are ministering today and have been ministering all these years because of this woman. She taught us. She trained us. She lived it. But you know what a battle it was for her. But the moment she put God completely first in her life, put him first in everything, she left everything she knew in Sydney to come to Perth. And she didn't want to leave Sydney. She didn't want to be a pastor's wife. But you know what? I just thank God every day for this amazing woman that she pushed through. And I pray that if that's you, just push through. Do you know today you can baptise the Holy Spirit? But if you're not, you're not wanting. You know, love and power filled this woman. And I'm praying that love and power will fill you today. You know, today that can be you. That can be you. Wherever you are listening to this message, whether you're in your pyjamas or not, just start worshipping him and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled. We have to open our mouths. So I always say to people, just start praising God. Just start praising him right now. Right where you are. You're not wanting. Someone out there that thinks they're wanting, that, you know, I can't do this. No, you can't. But just allow him to do a miracle in your life today and touch you right now where you are and fill you with the Holy Spirit. That's right. Just start to praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we love you, Jesus. And you'll feel little words come in your mouth and, you know, just keep repeating him. Just keep praising him. Just praising him. Oh, people, you'll be such, such a gift to so many people. Such a gift to so many people when we are filled with power. But remember what I said in the beginning, we are filled with power to witness to others. God bless you. Have an incredible, incredible Pentecost Sunday and let every day be a Pentecost Sunday. I get up every morning and worship him and speak in tongues because half the time things are so rough, I don't even know how to pray. But when I speak in tongues, I know that he understands everything. God bless you, people. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Lynette. How mm. amazing was that? I mean, we know a little bit about Pentecost yes. or a lot actually about Pentecost yep. Sunday, but it's always lovely to get reminded on how special Pentecost Sunday is and uh, what it actually represents. Yeah. And I believe you've had some testimonies that yeah, you can share. Yeah, I, I think... The, the Holy Spirit for me um, has, uh, like, I can't imagine walking my Christian life no. now without no. the Holy Spirit. But when I first uh, gave my life to Jesus, I, I, I'd been taught that the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit didn't exist yeah. today, I that was it was just for the early similar. church. Yep. Um, and so I had this wrestle of... Um, you know, I was experiencing some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit but was be, had been taught that it didn't exist for now and so I was trying to think, oh, is that just in my head? Yeah. Like literally just in my head and I'm going crazy um, <laughs> with with visions and, and the ability to, to speak prophetically or words yeah. of knowledge into people's lives um, at that point. But I just went on a journey and then I was, uh, I remember being in a connect group at an old church and uh, everyone in the group sort of stood up and started praying for me to speak in tongues because apparently that was what you needed to do and everyone needed to do that. And yeah. uh, I hadn't asked them to pray for me. It was really uncomfortable. And 
you know, I took a gamble. Mm. I looked around the room and was like, I don't think any of them speak French. So <laughs> I started speaking French in there <laughs> after about 20 minutes or so because I, it was completely awkward and uncomfortable. Um, and so they took that as a as success. Yay. He's speaking in tongues. Um, <laughs> and I, I mm. faked it. Um, and then I remember having a conversation with someone about it and they were like, look, um, some people teach that tongues is the only... Um, like, like that's the evidence of baptism in the Holy Spirit, mm. where, whereas it's actually one, one of many yeah. evidences of it. And, but God, you know, if you, if, if you want things like that, you can ask him for that. And I remember sitting there one night asking God for that. It didn't happen immediately. And I was like, oh, okay, guess it's not for me. Cool. Um, a couple of weeks later, uh, I was on the bus going to uni, headphones <laughs> in, listening to worship music. And was just praying and just started speaking in tongues. And so, did you get some weird looks? Uh, yeah, I, I, I often would because I would I, I wouldn't remember how loud my music yeah, was and exactly. and in, inadvertently start singing and uh, out of chain. Yeah, yeah. Those those yeah. who know me know that I'm a little bit tone deaf, um, mm. so it's not a pleasant experience for most people. Uh, <laughs> so, so that that's how like baptism in, in well. well not baptism in the Holy Spirit. I'd had that previously, but mm. the speaking in tongues came there. And then I've I, and I've seen throughout my life the moments where those gifts have come in. And I yeah, think back stunning. to Pentecost weekend last year. And now, so Pastor Robert filmed in advance online, um, but he was unwell the actual weekend of yes, doing that in the live of the live service. Yeah. Um, and so we were like, oh, yep, we've got the video. We'll just play the video. <laughs> Um, and then we had all the tech issues in the world and the video couldn't play. And so literally on 10 minutes notice, I had to get up and you did. preach. Um, and you were thrown into it because I think yep. I was supposed to do the message originally and I got COVID or yeah, something. Yep. So, you know, it was one thing after another yep. after and, another, and, wasn't and, it? Yeah, well, there was, yeah. No, there was no one else around. It no, was there literally wasn't, em, it was It was <laughs> Em and I. Em was worship leading. Yeah. Um, and so doing that. And so for me, I'm like... This is where walking in community totally. with the Holy Spirit yeah. is that I, I trust the Holy Spirit's voice mm. and and I'm willing to go, you know what, I'm completely out of my depth right now. Holy exactly Spirit, right. take the wheel, yep. speak through me. Um, and the Holy Spirit did. And, and I that's think, the beauty of it, right? Yeah. There's a beauty of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit is trusting fully in him yep. and he always comes through and uh, you know I, I love that and I love those stories and, yeah. and stuff Jimmy so thank you for sharing and right. you may have some other questions that you may want answered or you may be chewing over going I'm not too sure what that's all about you know Pastor Rob does Tuesday Night Live yep. where any one of us can ask him a curly question and he will go away and he'll study the word if he doesn't mm -hmm. know the answer already so can we encourage you that if you do have a question after today's service or any service at all, feed it back through to Pastor Rob, feed it back through to connect at basedchurch.com.au yep. and we will pass it on to Pastor Rob and he will answer those questions for you on Tuesday Night Live. Yeah, so that's 8pm every Tuesday, YouTube and Facebook. Yep. Um, often during the school holidays, you might take a couple of weeks off, yep. but uh, definitely send through your questions, okay? Happy Pentecost weekend. Thank you. Same to you. And, and God yeah. bless your church. We'll, we'll uh, you see you next week with Pastor Rob preaching.